And now, can you tell me a little bit about the history behind Allianz Francais? Yes, of course. It's a very old organization, uh, an Australian not-for-profit association created in 1890. Uh, and we have this beautiful mansion here in St. Kilda. Uh, and we are a, a cultural center and a language center. We teach French. Uh, and as you see, we welcome exhibitions too. <laughs> so that's it. Mm. Yeah. So there's some lovely like um, artworks behind us as well and all around here. Mm. And you also do like film screenings or you guys get involved as an organization with mm. um, like upcoming film festivals. Yeah. And you have one coming up in November. Yeah. Can you tell me a little bit about that one? Yes, it's a new festival because uh, the network of the Alliance Française in Australia uh, organized for 27 years now uh, a French film festival on March and it is very successful uh, and it's a big organization with a selection of 48 films. And this time we wanted to, to speak about classic movies, classic French movies, and we organized this first edition of a mini retrospective, um, the Classic French Film Festival, uh, which will happen in Melbourne, which will open on early November. I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, I'm definitely yeah. going to be coming along. Yeah. Um, and you were telling me earlier that it's, um, it's being held at a beautiful cinema in Melbourne. Yeah. Um, how did you like come up with that being the place where the films were going to be screened? Was it because of the, the culture or...? Because we work uh, with a professional uh, cinema and our partner uh, in Australia is Palace Cinema. And uh, recently uh, they opened uh, the Astor, uh, which is an old cinema, uh, part of the soul of uh, St. Kilda. And we thought, oh, well, it was the, the, the perfect place to, uh, to, to organize a classic uh, film uh, cinema. And they do uh, all movies uh, regularly. I think every week you can catch up with all movies, French, European, American. And yes, it's the perfect place. Yeah. Um, now that sounds amazing. So I reckon that, like everyone should definitely check that out. And within your organization also, you were saying that people can actually come here and they can have classes. Yeah. So what were some of the types of classes that um, everyday people can come and yeah. get involved in? Yeah, exactly. We learn French. We have many session types of courses and we have uh, all the year uh, around 3000 students. So, um, yes, French uh, uh, is uh, strong uh, in Australia uh, uh, and Australian people and students and, and, and school boys and girls uh, still learn French at school. You did, maybe? Oh, just a little. Just a little. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, well, the, the Alliance Française uh, is kind of uh, evidence uh, for French teaching. Yeah, well, that's really beautiful. Um, and I would love to um, have a chat about how you first got involved with um, Alliance Francais. Yeah. Um, because you were saying about your background, mm -hmm. um, which we'll talk about a bit later, but how did you um, first get involved with the organization? Well, uh, it was, uh, I was previously uh, in, um, in a network which is called the French Institute. And it's pretty the same of the Alliance Française, apart from being more public and, and funded by the government. As I told you, the Alliance Française is an independent network and, and based on local association. So we are Australian, <laughs> even if all here is French. And uh, I was posted in London and it was the openness and the connection to Alliance Française because it's uh, a friendly network, I would say, of the, the French Institute. So I had a leg in the system, I would say. Yeah. So you have like a very um, a wonderful background going back with uh, this organization. 
Um, can you tell me a little bit about your own background? Because yeah. you mentioned that you've uh, travelled a lot yeah. um, Calid in Caledonia and like London and, yeah. and Paris. Yeah, I was born in New Caledonia, but uh, uh, soon uh, I studied in Paris. And uh, I, made, I made most of my career at the Ministry of Culture in France. Um, and all started uh, uh, there. So I, I, I worked for the government, uh, but I also worked for cultural institutions like Opera House or, um, um, or um, institution promoting uh, uh, French uh, artists abroad. And uh, uh, the connection uh, with uh, the foreign services uh, uh, came at this moment, mm -hmm. oh. but always in the arts and cultural field. It's all of my background. Wow, so it seems like you have a massive passion for arts yeah. and culture. Um, relating back to Melbourne, can you see um, the same differences between you know the arts and culture that we have here in Melbourne compared to what's coming out of France? and? I won't say that. It's very different. The organization is not the same. Uh, and, I, and I won't start this discussion with you because it's a bit complicated. Okay. Uh, but uh, yes, you have major institution, a uh, very important museum uh, here in Melbourne. And uh, it's rare, I think, in this country, uh, independent artists, um, uh, whether they are from the visual art or the performing arts. I don't think there is the same uh, in Sydney, for example. And um, yes, it's a very cultural, uh, grounded city. Do you say that? Yeah, definitely, <laughs> yeah. Um, very open to a lot of different arts and culture. And something, well, we say it's a cliche, but uh, uh, it's very European. Uh, uh, you are not completely... Uh, it, it, Melbourne is not exotic uh, when you come from a city uh, like London or Paris. Mm. Yeah. A uh, city is much more exotic. <laughs> yeah. Um, Melbourne's definitely like uh, much newer. We don't have that, that background. Right. And that's what's really beautiful is that with you bringing, you know, all these beautiful artworks as well mm -hmm. um, and it sharing the, yeah. the French uh, cultural mm -hmm. arts mm -hmm. and um, artists. Yeah. we get to have a look at all this wonderful um, work <laughs> that you guys are showcasing here. What is fantastic in this city is that Melbournians are very open-minded and, and very keen to discover other or new cultures and uh, maybe it makes the, dif the, di the difference with the rest of the country. I don't know. <laughs> I, don't know. I, I completely enough, agree with you. <laughs> I, I, I suppose. I feel it. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. No, I, I reckon it's, it's pretty much the same. Mm -hmm. um, so next, I was wondering, um, could you teach me a little bit of French? Yeah. So something you like um, how to compliment someone or wish them like a good day. So how about like something, um, I hope you have a wonderful day today. To, mm, it will be or tricky you for you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, um, bonne journée. Bonjour. Yeah, that's it. Oh, there we go. With the expression "bonjour." Bonjour. Exactly. <laughs> and, and you can uh, you can end uh, with "voila." <laughs> okay, bonjour. Voila. It always works. <laughs> and what was I saying? Uh, bonjour. Have a good day. Have a good day. And voila, that's it. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> that's all. That's it. Mm -hmm. Oh, wonderful. Well, yeah. bonjour. Voila. Um, and thank you so much for having a chat today. Yeah. Um, it was really wonderful, you know, experiencing this beautiful place. Um, and I hope that a lot more people will come and check yeah. it out and the film festival. Mm -hmm. The film festival. It's, it's your first time at the Alliance Française? Yeah, yeah, it'll be my okay. first time. So yeah. it's a, a Meritage uh, listed mention and we are very, pr very proud of it. Mm -hmm. It's a jewel. Yeah, it really is a beautiful place. Yes, it is. <laughs> Well, thank you so much. No, thanks to you. <laughs> thanks for coming here at the Alliance Française de Melbourne. So can you tell me, for the film festival, why, why was it Le Blonde? Because I thought of you.
<laughs> it was humor, but it doesn't work, you know. We are lost in translation. Because no, because we wanted to play with a, a, a cliche uh, that comes from Hollywood, I would say. You know, this blonde, inaccessible, or the kind of girl uh, you allow yourself to whistle at on the street. And uh, I realized that in French cinema, you had uh, uh, blondes, uh, actresses, and, and the characteristic of the blondes is that they are very strong tempered and nearly equal to men. And it was something very different. They were not objects of, de of desire, not necessarily beautiful, uh, of course, as blondes are. Uh, but we wanted to play with this little difference. Well, I think it sounds like a really like beautiful, unique idea. Because like you said, you know, there are stereotypes. Yeah. And for you to pick that up in like French uh, film culture yeah. and to, you know, share that with um, people in the form of like a film festival is such an excellent thing. Um, now, what is one of your favorite picks or have you chosen a favorite film that's going to be screening? Well, I, I, I tried to, to select a representative movie uh, um, and ranging from the 50s to the 70s. But definitely my favorite is a comedy. And it is, uh, it is called in English, uh, Lovers Like Us. But in French, it is Le Sauvage, which means the savage, which is very different. I don't understand the English <laughs> translation because it has nothing to see. And uh, it is with Catherine Deneuve, uh, well, a French movie star, just beautiful. She was the image of uh, Chanel uh, for long, and she's very known in the United States. And Yves Montand, uh, who is um, uh, an, actor, uh, an actor who died, unfortunately, but he was very popular in the 70s and the 80s. And both of them are just, are just incredible. And it is set uh, in uh, the exotic location of an island far from Venezuela. Uh, so everything is beautiful and it's very funny and the rhythm is incredible. The pace, rhythm, moment, momentum. Yeah, yeah the, the, the timing. <laughs> yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly. So it's my favorite. Yeah, well, that sounds like my kind of film. I might have to go and see that one. <laughs> yeah, of course, I will invite you. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful, okay. <laughs>